just to cover myself here this is just for review it's just for commentary I don't uh, have any affiliate links with any of the people featured in this video it's just for my commentary it's just to help people understand exactly what's happening here and for me to put my views across and for what's uh, what's useful for other people to understand a little bit more about English and the English language okay today guys we are going to look at the English with Lucy video one language three accents UK versus USA versus Australian English okay let's get into it see what's happening right let's get on with the lesson and welcome our guests firstly I would like to welcome Emma to the channel hey there I'm Emma from the mm English YouTube channel coming at you from Perth in Western Australia and we also have Vanessa hi I'm Vanessa and I live in North Carolina in the US I run the YouTube channel Speak English with Vanessa. It's so lovely to have Emma and Vanessa on the channel. I've known Emma for a very, very long time, four years now, <laughs> and I've recently got to know Vanessa. Both of them have fantastic YouTube channels and all of their information is in the description box if you want to follow them. So I have got some pictures and Vanessa, Emma and I are going to tell you how we would say what's in these pictures in our own country. You might be surprised at some of the answers. Okay, so let's start with this one. In the US, these are chips, 100% just chips. I can't believe you started with this one. These are chips. We call these crisps, crisps. <laughs> the other word that you use, Lucy, is the most complicated word in the English language to say. So let's just call them chips and move along. Yeah, I'll give you that one. Uh, crisps is a notoriously difficult word for learners of English. It's the sps sound at the end, crisps. You'll f yes, yes, yes. I can understand why people would find that difficult to say, um, particularly if it's non-native, yes. Um, Crisps though, definitely in the UK it's crisps. That sps sound, as Lucy says, is difficult to say sometimes. Um, even some English have trouble with that, so yeah. But if you want crisps in England, you have to ask for crisps. You can't ask for chips because you'll get hot potatoes. Hot chipped potatoes. We'll find out what that is next find a lot of people mispronouncing them as crips, crips, when they should be crisps. So here is the next one and it gets even more complicated because in the UK we call these chips. <laughs> so in the US the cold version is chips and in the UK the hot version is chips. Let's see what Vanessa has to say about this. What does she call them? These are French fries. I know that they're not really French, but we still call them French fries, or you can just say fries by themselves. The next one's chips as well, right? They're hot chips. Hot chips, oh my God, <laughs> hot chips. Australians just call everything chips then. <laughs> it is worth noting that if you go to England and you order fries or French fries, we know exactly what you mean. Okay. Yes, to a certain extent. Um... Yeah, like I said, to to a lot of English, French fries, uh, yes, we know what you mean, but to, to English, French fries are the really, really thin cut potato chips. So they're really, really thin. Uh, whereas English generally would have a really, really thick slice of potato, or that slice of chipped potato, that's exactly what it means, is chipped potato chips. Uh, and they tend to be thicker. French fries are thin, chips are thicker. Okay, next we have this one. We call these cookies or chocolate chip cookies specifically. 
Okay, they are biscuits. Um, don't really hear people saying cookie. Yes, two against one. These for us are biscuits as well. And we would use cookie to refer to an American style, normally chocolate chip cookie. However, if you use the word biscuit in the United States, you might get something that you are not expecting. Vanessa has more on this. If you asked someone, do you have any biscuits or I want a biscuit, they would not give you this. Instead, they'd give you a savory kind of fluffy type piece of bread. A biscuit is savory and a cookie is sweet. So that. Yes, again, very, very different biscuits. Yes, we do have savory biscuits in the UK. We have. Um, we tend to call the savoury biscuits crackers. Uh, they usually go with things like cheese, um, not something that, that um, is particularly different between countries. But yeah, to, to the English, I think cookies mean something sort of doughy and soft, um, usually sweet. Um, yeah, biscuits. Biscuits are definitely not soft, they're hard, they're crunchy, cookies are soft. Another thing British do with biscuits, as you probably know, is we like to dip them in our tea, we call them dunking. So you dunk your biscuits in the tea. There we have it. If you fancy something sweet with your coffee in America, don't ask for a biscuit. <laughs> you will be bitterly disappointed. Okay. Vanessa got very passionate about this next one. Very passionate. Here is the picture. Vanessa seems to think that she knows the absolute correct answer. And she's even done research. I did not expect Emma and Vanessa to get books out for this video. <laughs> I have the proof that my answer is the most correct because you can see my two-year-old son is obsessed with trucks. We have so many truck books. Let me read to you. What truck do you need? A tractor trailer. <laughs> so this is also what I would call it, a tractor trailer. I might call it a semi. All right, that yellow thing is a truck. So Vanessa thinks it's a tractor trailer and she's very, very sure about it. In all of these books, <laughs> they call it a tractor trailer. So we're gonna go with that one. That really tickled me. Emma thinks it's a truck. In the UK, we would call this a lorry. A lorry. <laughs> it's a truck. Whatever, Emma, it's a lorry. Okay. Yes, to a certain extent, possibly. I think um, having my engineering background would probably tend to say that they would be a lorry, but to me, uh, a lorry is, is a, something that's a very large vehicle uh, that doesn't have the articulated joint for the trailer. Um, so we would tend to call what that was in the picture there, we would call, yeah, I think Lucy would say lorry, yes, possibly we'd say lorry. From my engineering background, I would say it's either an Arctic or a truck. Um, Arctic is abbreviation for articulated, so we'd shorten it to Arctic. Uh, yeah, that's, um, yeah, lorries is, is still generally used. Um, I can see where the tractor trailer unit came in, um, because, uh, in servicing, in, within trucks, the, within the truck industry and lorry industry in the UK, these are known as traction units and the separate units that are articulated behind the trailer. So yeah, I can see tractor trailer units. And um, I think sometimes in the north of England, these are actually referred to as wagons. So yeah, it depends where you go in the UK. What about this next one? What have the women got up here? These girls all have bangs. We would definitely say fringe. Um, bangs is probably um, becoming more popular, especially colloquially. 
So in the UK, we definitely call this a fringe. And when I started hearing the word bangs in movies and things like that, I was really genuinely confused. Okay, what about this next? Yes, totally agree. Um, never heard the word bangs before until I started seeing it, uh, hearing it said in particularly and obviously in American films and TV series and stuff like that. Yeah, totally confused and didn't know what it was, thought it meant long hair. Um, didn't even know that I had a clue that it was fringe. But yes, there you go, difference between American and English. Next one. This is candy. They are lollies. Lollies. Lollies! That is so cute. So in British English, these are sweets. Or sometimes if you're talking to a child, they might call them sweeties. Lollies for us are sweets on a stick. Right. Yeah, true. I think British would call them sweets. Uh, yeah, lollies tends to mean a sweet on a stick. Yeah, she's right. But also, yes, we also have frozen ones so we call them ice lollies so they are basically usually frozen fruit flavors on a stick which you suck or lick simple as that what about this next one this is a swimsuit some people might call it a bathing suit you can also call this a one piece okay this one's really funny in Melbourne, where I am from, it's really common to call them togs. But no one else in Australia really calls them togs. They call it swimmers. In Sydney, they call them cozies or costumes. Um, but generally, it's swimmers or bathers. Oh gosh, there's another one. Bathers or swimmers. <laughs> oh my word, I did not expect to receive so many different ways of saying swimming costume. <laughs> this for us is a swimming costume. We can also say one piece and we can... Uh, yes, too. So again, certainly I, I would I would say either swimming costume or bathing suit. So it, it could be either. And I've obviously heard it called cozies as well. Yeah, go with that. We can also shorten it down to cosy. I remember my mum saying, get your cosy on before my swimming lessons when I was a child, but that's quite a, a childish thing. Okay, what about this next one? This is the forest. Uh, that is definitely a forest. forest. No, <laughs> it's the woods, woods, plural. This is definitely the woods. I mean, in general, we say the woods. Forest implies a huge, huge area of trees of woodland the wood yeah totally with lucy on this one yeah it's the woods woodland we call it woodland woods uh yeah to, to me also forest means a really really big area of trees so a really really big forest uh, sorry really really big woodland area is a forest definitely go with that wood sounds kind of like something you might hear in an old-fashioned fairy tale yeah well Vanessa sometimes life in England is like an old-fashioned fairy tale I think a lot of Americans have this vision of England as a place with so much culture and history <laughs> like a fairy tale and then they come over and they are just so disappointed <laughs> okay yeah, totally agree with that as well. It's, I don't know how it happened or why it happened, but yes, for sure. Uh, some, I wouldn't say all, but some Americans do have a vision of the UK being a, all castles and cathedrals and um, afternoon tea possibly. But yeah, it's, it's not. I'd highly recommend you come visit us and see what it's really like. Okay, what about this next one? This is a bathroom. You might say it's a restroom, but it would be really unusual to call a place that actually has a bathtub a restroom. Usually we use the term restroom for public places. That room is a bathroom? 
Yeah, it's a bathroom. Okay, so Vanessa touched on restroom and bathroom. Now, we would never use the word restroom in British English. If we were in a public place and we are looking for a bathroom, we would say toilet. However, if there is a bath there, like a bathtub, then yes, we might say bathroom as well. But we would ask, where's the toilet? If you say, where's the toilet? Most people in the US would just say, uh, it's in the bathroom. I mean, she's not wrong. <laughs> the toilet is in the bathroom. There is also a slang word which I use a lot, which is the loo. Where's the loo? I went to the States for a business trip and I asked people where the loo was and they were utterly confused. The loo? What's the loo? <laughs> All right. Yes, uh, again, this I guess it's a, a very British thing. Um, yeah, I'd still say toilet. Uh, I'd still say possibly loo. Um, slang versions of this would also be a t a t again this is me probably the company I associate with people in general th that I work with would either say toilet, loo or even bog that's B-O-G, bog let's move on to the next this is an apartment this is mostly called an apartment we would never <laughs> say flat Okay, so in British English, this is a flat. We have a block of flats. I've lived in many flats in my life. We don't use the word apartment. Okay, the next one. Yep, with that, totally with that. Maybe the picture wasn't clear enough for this one because Emma did get a bit confused, but she gave us all of the options. Good old Emma. This is a grocery store. I'm not exactly sure what I'm looking at in that image, but it could be a trolley. It could be an aisle, or it could be a supermarket. Hey, bingo, it's a supermarket for us as well. Or we call it the shops. I'm going to the supermarket, I'm going to the shops. The shops is more general, it could mean any type of shop. We would never say grocery store. We might, however, say grocers, the grocers. This is a shop that just sells fruits and vegetables. All right, next. Uh, yeah, we again we'd call it the, the supermarket for sure. Um, disagreeing slightly with Lucy here because she said groceries are fruits and vegetables. No, that's I'm sorry, that's green grocers. So that's fruits, vegetables, leafy greens, etc. Is is that to me is green grocers. It's not just gross. Grocers is food generally. Next one. This is a comforter. Oh my God, how weird is the word comforter? That's weird. Um, yeah, in Australia, that's called a doona. <laughs> <laughs> I that? love that Emma is saying that the word comforter is weird. And then she goes to say that in Australia, it's a doona. That's weirder, Emma. <laughs> so in British English, this is a duvet, a duvet, which apparently Vanessa finds weird. See, we all find each other weird. I didn't. Yeah, it's definitely a duvet. Wouldn't refer to it as anything else. I didn't know what a duvet was. Maybe I'm very sheltered, <laughs> but I didn't know what a duvet was until I visited Europe. We just do not have those in the US. Okay, I feel there's going to be a lot of conflict about this next one. These are bell peppers. Okay, they're capsicums. Red, green, yellow capsicums. No, they're just plain old peppers. Red peppers, green peppers, and yellow peppers. Capsicum, what? This is Latin, this is English. Uh, yeah, I, again, I would say red, yellow, or green peppers for sure. Uh, if somebody said bell peppers to me, I'd know what it was, but capsicums, yeah, I know it's it's the Latin uh, for those, but I've never heard them called capsicums. I guess it's just what it is in Australia. Okay, another one that's going to cause a bit of conflict. Uh. These are rain boots, and also the jacket that goes with it is a raincoat or a rain jacket. I guess in the US we like really clear, straightforward, 
uh, names for items like this, rain boots. What's it for? It's for the rain. It's very clear, <laughs> boots for the rain. I mean, she's not wrong, is she? American English is sometimes more simplified than British English, and this is no bad thing, really. So let's see what Emma has to say. Um, when it's muddy and rainy, um, I would put my gum boots on to walk around in the wet. Yeah, I mean, we would we never say gum boots. I think I've heard my grandma say it, so it might be quite an old fashioned thing. Uh, in British English, we say wellies or welly boots. Are you ready for this next? Yeah, just to expand on that, she didn't expand, Lucy didn't expand on why we call them wellies in, uh, in the UK. It's, called, they're called Wellington boots. Um, I think that came from, I'm not that up on history, I have to say, um, but I think it came from, it was named after, after a person. They, they were named after a person. Um, the, they were usually a rubber boot, although these days they tend to be a rubberized plastic. Uh, yeah, Wellington boots. Next one. Are you ready? Because what Australians call these is frankly shocking. <laughs> oh, this this is funny. Let's hear from Vanessa. This first. is funny. These are flip flops. Yeah, these are flip flops, Emma. What do you call them? When we go to the beach in Australia, we wear our thongs. Our thongs, it's plural, and we're talking about the shoes on our feet. They're our thongs. <laughs> so I have to explain to you what thongs, what a thong is in British English and American English. A thong is like a G-string. It's a, a type of underwear where there is just... Yeah, it's... Um, when she says a type of underwear, it's actually ladies' underwear, not men's underwear. One string at the back um, instead of more fabric. If Emma said to me, can I borrow some thongs? I would probably lend her some but I'd be a bit concerned. Okay, next one. Where would you go to fill up your car? This is a gas station where you put gas into your car. So when I fill up my car, I fill it up at the petrol station. Good, I'm with Emma again on this one. She's redeeming herself after the thong situation. <laughs> yes, we also call this a petrol station. The fuel that we put into our car is petrol. I spent much of my childhood confused, but I was especially confused by the fact that Americans put gas into their car because I thought, well, petrol's a liquid. <laughs> Turns out it's just short for gasoline. Now the next one's... Yes, again, this is true. Um, but petrol is also, although it's very English to say petrol station, but petrol is also short. It's a shortened form of the words petroleum spirit um, as opposed to motor oil uh, to oil you would put in the engine petrol petroleum spirit you would put in the fuel in the uh, petrol tank but yeah generally now a good majority of the UK they just know it as petrol stations yes that's absolutely correct Sounds quite interesting. I want to know what they call a shop that only sells alcohol. And this is interesting because in America, their attitude towards alcohol is slightly different. We're very open, maybe too open to alcohol in the UK and Australia. But alcohol is more controlled by the government and the states in the United States. This is an ABC store, which I just learned because I just looked it up. It stands for Alcohol Beverage Controlled State. So this is a store that sells only alcohol. And that last word state is because it is run by the state or run by the government. Now let's see what Emma calls it because I have heard that Australians have some fun names for places like these. When I go and get a bottle of wine, I go to the bottle shop which in Australia we also call the bottler. 
bottle love it. It would sound so stupid in a British accent. I'm just going to the bottle do you need anything? <laughs> Otolo. Yeah, it only works really when you pronounce your T's as D, bottle In British English, we call this an off-licence. An off-licence. Okay. Yeah, just to expand on what that actually means, uh, yeah, it's in the UK, is known as off-licence. Um, to sell beers, wines and spirits in the UK, in, the, in a, what's called a pub, you need a licence. Uh, from the government to sell alcohol. Uh, an off license means these these smaller shops have a license which is off from the pub or away from the pub. It means you can go into a small shop and buy alcohol. So we yeah we would call it the off license or sometimes it's even shortened to the offy. The offy. Okay, what about this next one? I feel like I'm going to get ganged up on here. Trousers. These are pants. 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 Old people might call them trousers. Well, excuse me, I must be very old then because these are hands down trousers. They are trousers. We do use the word pants to refer to underpants. Oh, because they go under your pants. Yeah, maybe they are right. <laughs> My whole life has been a lie. Under uh, again, I can certainly understand why they're called pants, but generally in the UK, these are referred to as trousers. If they're cut above the knee, they tend to be known as shorts or short trousers if you're really old fashioned. Underpants because they go under your pants. Ooh, under trousers. Doesn't work, does it? Well, anyway, these are trousers and I'm not old, Emma. Shit. <laughs> now, what do we call this? The little walking space beside a Pavement, road. for sure. This is a sidewalk. The concrete beside the road where people walk in Australia is called a footpath. Interesting. We don't say either of these. We say pavement. Pavement. Yes. Now, we would never say sidewalk, we do say footpath, but a footpath is normally not beside a road. A pavement is just beside a road and a footpath is anywhere else. Okay. And yeah, totally agree. It's the pavement. Another car related one. What do we call this? This is a highway or you could call it an interstate. A highway or maybe a freeway in Australia. Ooh, we don't say either of these either. We never say highway in, um, in British English. Interstate, well, we don't have states, so that doesn't work either. Freeway, no. Freeway sounds dangerous. It sounds like you can do whatever you want. You're just free to drive however you like. We call these motorways, motorways. Yeah, that's a generally accepted term in the UK. Those are motorways. Okay, what is this dashing young man wearing? This guy is wearing a shirt that has a name that's maybe not so kind. <laughs> we call this a wife beater. That is terrible. And this word has actually bled into the British English vocabulary. Although in general, we would call this a vest. Or you could also call it a tank top or a tank. Um, but that again is another Americanism. This for us really is a vest. And what about Emma? That dashingly handsome guy is wearing a singlet. A singlet? I mean, I have, I, I've never really heard that word before. It really is. She's never heard of singlet. She's English and she's never heard of singlet, really. Yeah, okay, generally it's accepted as a vest, for sure. I would, I would call it a vest. I've, yeah, I've heard of the, the colloquial term wife beater. It's not a... It refers to a certain section of society's male population who would wear those, um, who, who would, yeah, generally know, be known as people who would beat their wives or hit them yeah 
but uh, you know, singlet, getting back to singlet, yeah, the singlet is something we would have used in sports. Um, if we had a vest top in sports, it would be called a singlet. It's so interesting that our vocabularies differ so widely. Right, that is it for our lesson today on British English, Australian English and American English vocabulary. I really hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. Thank you so much to Emma and Vanessa for coming on this channel and helping me to make this video. As I said before, I've left all of their information in the description box. Make sure you watch the other video in this two-part series on pronunciation. So we're going to be focusing Okay, yeah, that could uh, that just covers it. Uh, just putting my two cents, as you would say in English, we would say two pennies worth. Yeah, it's um, it just goes to show three very very different ways of using English. Uh, one Australian, one American, and one English. Thank you very much.